Welcome everyone to Everything Money. It's a wonderful day because there's a lot of red in the markets, especially on crypto. I guess BlockFi is now warning about a chapter 11 bankruptcy. Shocker. So, oh, but Kevin O'Leary said that that was the last one. So Kevin O'Leary is an idiot. So three companies we're talking about today. Target just reported, Lowe's just reported, and Zim just reported. Let's start with Zim. Zim is a shipping company. Now, the reason I want to talk about Zim they beat on revenue 3.23 billion versus 3.01 billion expectations. And they beat on earnings per share, $9.66 versus $9.46. But let's pull it up in our software so I can show you guys why this is what I mean. So look at this. I know this is going to sound crazy. Crypto. It was too easy to make money. Too much of a run up. Be cautious when those things happen. When I look at a company like Zim, let me make this a little bit bigger for everyone out there. Look at the revenue for Zim. This is what concerns me. 1.6, 6.5, 13.75 billion. Is this sustainable? I don't know. My guess is it's not. And the reason being is what's happened in the last few years. Supply chain issues. Yeah. We import a lot of stuff from overseas. We saw our shipping costs go from 5,000 a container to 25,000 a container. That's a temporary thing. I don't think it's going to be a permanent thing. What do you think, Mo? No, I could the 5,000 become maybe 8,000 now? Maybe that's the new base. Sure. But it's not going to stay 25,000. Yeah, so I always worry about these revenue numbers. So therefore, I worry about the profit numbers as well. They went from 3 million in profit to 2 billion in profit to 6 billion in profit. Oh, Good news, it's a high margin business. That's true. Look so, at this chart. Let's see the chart. It started, started down here, gave, went to a heck of a run up to like $95, and here we are. Back down here. Do you remember when we were in Mexico and we were trading and we shorted this stock? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, April, you're right. And we were shorting By the way, it. we shorted it from a trading, trading standpoint, standpoint not we from a it. fundamentals. I think it was like, is this April? No, maybe it was, it was right in here. That's where it was. You you exited later than me, so you made yeah, more money than I, I did. More, yeah. I exited at like 20. I mean, we, it like ripped down really quickly. I kind of let this happen and then it came back down like that. But that was fun. Yeah, so it's a company. I mean, you look at things like price to sales ratio. Man, that looks cheap. You know, I, I don't I don't know. It's just, um, guys, I would just be cautious on this one because of how crazy the market's been there. So I did a deep dive in this on this one with the Oracles of EM. Oh. And this, I, it was in the too hard category. Was it? I went through it for about 40, 45 minutes, and I just, I, I couldn't come to a confident solution. Now, consensus. from a long-term perspective, I think shipping is an industry that's going to be, I mean, it's, We're still importing from China, India, and I think Africa is the next frontier. It's only going to get bigger and more stable. So that's the thing. Yeah. I want it to just get more. I'm willing to pay a higher price for it per share, but with, a, with an easier analysis that I can figure out. Mm -hmm. Target. Target is down big today. Let's 15%. pull up Target. 15% down today, which is not its 52-week low, by the way. It's currently at $152. The 52-week low is 137.16. All-time high of 268, very recently. So they reported a dollar fifty-four in earnings per share, which was which missed big, big two thirteen expectation. The funny part is, Target was up seventeen percent this week because of the lead-up. People thinking, oh, they're going to crush earnings. It's going to be awesome. They're going to be great. Look at Walmart yesterday. They're going to follow Walmart. Walmart beat. It was good news for everybody, but they did beat on revenue barely twenty six point five two billion versus twenty six point three eight billion. They beat on same store sales. Oh, they did? They were up just a, just a touch, yeah. Just a uh, touch on same-store sales? Expectation was 2.51%, oh. came in at 2.7%. Okay, that's good. So good. I thought you yeah. meant like overall same, same, comparable sales were just up slightly. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So I, I like Target a lot. I have, a, I have Target on my list of companies I want to own. So why don't we sit here and look at the eight pillars for Target since it's down so much? Okay. Guys, it's almost an eight-pillar thriller. Okay. Mo, can you check out the cash flow statement as to why we have a, sure. a decrease in cash flow? But guys, oof, not a big margin business. Look it's at this again. Something that happened this year. I mean, look at that. Bill, three, three billion, three billion, six and a half billion, two, six point two five billion, four hundred twenty. Well, change in working capital is a big d change that's, in that. That's probably what it is. Then. So that's probably a big change. So that yeah. could stabilize. I'm not as worried about that. Um, dividend yield pays out one point seven billion. Their five year average is three point nine. So they can afford that dividend. I'm not worried about this one year free cash flow. They'll figure crap out. Their inventories. I mean, look at look at their inventories and how it went to $4 billion. Yeah. Change in inventories. It's a lot. Okay. So. Doubled from last year. 
look at this profit margin, about the same as Walmart. Walmart's at 25%, they're at 26. Amazon's at 12.9. Profit margin around four to four and a half percent. So guys, not a high margin business, but everybody here, 95, 96% of our viewers are men. And of those men, if you have spouses or girlfriends, they probably live in Target, right? It's yep. like, it's the, it's the it. white women, you know, capital of uh, <laughs> Hangout Central. They have a Starbucks they even in have Target. have Starbucks in there. Yeah. All right. By the way, I asked Lisa last night, hey, how many Starbucks do you think there are in the world? She said 200,000. I was like, okay. So <laughs> 17,000. It's funny. Uh, when we were driving in North Carolina one time, it was like the Mecca for like white women is if you have, you have three locations in, next to each other, Target, Starbucks, and Chick-fil-A. If you it's look for any Starb Starbucks, Target, Chick there's always a triangle of them. I always love the Ladins, which is a local um, restaurant, Chipotle. Yeah. And uh, Panera at the time. And in, in, in some location, I saw all three there. I was pretty excited. All right. So it's almost an eight-pillar thriller. Uh, let's look at analyst estimates here for Target. All right. They're doing, they're supposed to do, well, they supposedly did 13.38 in EPS um, ending March 22nd. It's going to go up. I mean, according to analysts over the next four or five years to 21 bucks, it's a 50% increase, but it's going to have a drop along the way. Revenue. Low, low single digits. So let's go to our stock analyzer tool. Now, if you're new to this channel, this is a very, very pop. This is the most popular part of our website. It allows people to make their assumptions about the future on a certain stock. And then it, based on those assumptions, the stock analyzer tool, not factoring in the balance sheet, will spit out a value based on that. Now, Mo and I always go back and forth in this. So I've decided to do something a little bit different today. Mo, you do your analysis. I'll do mine. Okay. And then we will reconvene here yeah. and I will, um, so I'm looking at this and my goal here is to be conservative, but not on the low side and aggressive on the high side. But I don't want to be, I want to be aggressive enough where it's reasonably attainable. Like it's possible it happens, like reasonably possible, but not overly possible. All right. Um, you know, something like this for profit margin, it's probably a pretty easy profit margin um, to look at because it's very consistent. And the same with free cash flow. Let's see here. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Guys, Target is an incredible, incredible company with a lot of potential. Um, it's, it's, it's one of those things where people like to go there and they do a great job with online ordering. My sister-in-law, online oh, orders from... She, every time I'm at their house, there's somebody pulling in the driveway from Target. I'm like, how much did you order from this and place? And she's not even like a, she's not she's even not a, a shopper. shopper. No. All right, Mo, are you done? Yeah. All right, what assumptions did you make? Revenue growth, one, three, and five. Okay. Profit margin, three and a half, four, four and a half. Okay. Same for free cash flow. Okay. PE, I came in 13, 15, 17. Uh huh. Same for price to free cash flow and my desired return, 12 and a half, 13 and a half, 14 and a half. So we came up with very similar numbers. I did revenue growth of two, four, six. Okay. I agreed with profit margin and free cash flow margin and PE and price to free cash flow. My desired return, I did 12, 13 and a half, 15. Okay. So hit the analyze button. Yep. Boom. I have, look at our prices. Very similar. I have a low of 92, a high of 150, a mid price of 120. I'm 83 to 142 with a mid of about 110. All right. So I'm going to add it to my watch list. I'm going to add it to my watch list at 130. And the reason being, even though I'm not buying it at 130, I want to be notified by the software when it hits 130. That way I can go sell puts on it at much lower prices and do more research than this. I don't want to just, I skim this thing right now. Before I go buy it, I want to do a little more research to understand what the company's doing to make sure I want to own it. All right. Lowe's. Lowe's. Lowe's is up 5%, almost 5% today. It was very consistent with what Home Depot came in at yesterday. Yeah. So they reported 327 in earnings per share versus 309 expectation. And they reported 23.48 billion in revenue, beating expectations of 23.16. So Mo, you want to go through the uh, eight pillars with people? Sure. So, ooh. Okay. Outside of the debt, which is not, which really doesn't worry me very much. This looks pretty good. I mean, our, even our PE. So over a little bit overpriced based on PE and price to free cash flow, just a little bit. So Paul, this one, when we run it through stock analyzer, we might be pretty close to our price. Return on invested capital is incredible. 23.3%. Revenue growth is there. Net income growth is there. Shares outstanding. This is something I maybe don't like. They've been buying back aggressively. And if you watched our video from yesterday about Home Depot, they have been buying back shares for 20 plus years consistently every year. So that's something that I want to take a look at. The debt really doesn't scare me, especially because it was very comparable to Home Depot. Um, free cash flow. 
And by the way, the debt is, uh, it's because of like, uh, mostly because of retail leases. Yeah. Like it's there. So let's go to the income statement and just take a quick look at shares outstanding. So, man, they like buying back shares. Been buying back shares. And I'm actually going to go back another decade. Just and guys, just consistent. explain that. One of our pillars is buying back his shares. Yeah. But you got to remember, no pillar in and of itself is, a, is, is the be all end all. We don't want them buying back shares when we consider the company to be expensive. That is a poor use, use of your capital in the business. You, you have a right, essentially, to that money in the, the thing in their bank accounts. So they take that money and buy their own stock back that's expensive. It's no different than buying another company that's expensive. So I have a question for you. I have an answer for you. When companies like this and Home Depot just buy their shares back every year consistently, for t- it's it's part of the plan. It's not like they're going out and saying, hey, our stock price is expensive this year, but we're going to buy back shares. They do it every year. What do you think about something like that? Don't care. They should okay. be holding off on that okay. one. But it, you can it, see, this is going back to 03. It's very consistent even through 2022. Every year they're buying By the way, it's shares. still discretionary that they buy back those years. So when they still do it, yeah. somebody, a they CFO, the CFO should be sitting there saying, um, guys, we shouldn't buy back our shares because we're selling for 35 times earnings. Mm-hmm. That's not a good use of our money. Yeah. Now they might make the argument of, oh, we have a 2% dividend yield next year. So if we, pay, if we buy back the shares. Let's say we buy back, 10 billion, yeah. we're going to save $200 million in dividend. K. Yeah, it's still overpaying. Right. I just don't like it. Yeah. They can comfortably afford their dividend. Right. 2.17 billion out of a five year average of 6 billion. Last year was 7.52. Okay. So let's go to analyst estimates. Low double, low, high single digits, low double digits EPS growth. Revenue growth is revenue low. growth, very low, very just low. like, I mean, Home Depot. Yeah. I mean, I actually am surprised about the revenue growth numbers Me too, because because inflation alone is going to pump. Up. I get, I guarantee that all the all the goods in Lowe's and Home Depot are going to go up like crazy. They already are. I mean, they, everything's more expensive. Well, it's I'm wondering go higher. Yeah, I don't agree with these revenue numbers. All right, and so by the way, sometimes go we don't agree on the positive side with analysts. So let's go to our stock analyzer tool. Same thing. Do it ourselves individually. So we're going to sit here and do what we want to do. Okay. Um, I imagine we're probably going to have pretty similar numbers in terms of our inputs as, uh, as target because these are big companies that have lower margins. I mean, look at the margin for lows. Good gross margin. Uh, I think Home Depot was a little bit better than that. Bottom line margin, five-year average around 7%. So there's a lot of benefit there. Um, there's a lot of consistency there. Better margins than Target, Walmart, things like that. It's more of a specialty store, so that's understandable completely. From my understanding and something that I read when I did a comparison of the two, um, these guys are more of the contractor store. than Lowe's? The, yeah. Than Home Depot? I think they sell more to contractors than they do individuals. Interesting. I think so. I, I don't know about that. I, 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 All I know I is know. I like Lowe's more than Home Depot. The customer service at Lowe's is better. See, I find the opposite. Oh, no. The Home Depot customer so service. Funny. I want to cry. All right. You ready? Yeah. Say. You, revenue growth. Go ahead. Two, four, six. Okay. I did one, three, five. Shocker. Profit margin. I did six, seven, eight. I did five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half. Okay. Free cash flow margin. I did seven, seven and a half, eight. I did seven across the board. Okay. I did 13, 15, 17, 13, 15, 17. Same here. I did 12, 14, 16. 12 and a half, 13 and a half, 14. And a half. Hit the analyze button. And guess what? I have a low price of 100 to 120, high price of 160, and a mid price of around 130 to 140. My, my low is uh, 84 to 106, high is 142 to 152, and my middle ground is about 120. So I'm adding it to my watch list at one, probably 40 to notify me and it's a ways away from there, but I'm okay. Remember I'm okay. Not buying the stock. If I can't, that's okay by me. To me, it's more, I will find a stock to buy lows. I just wait. And you might sit there and say, Oh, it's not going to fall to 140. Well, okay. Cause <laughs> last time I checked it's all time high was two sixty three, and that's $50 ago, $45 ago. That's, and it's it, and the low in the last year was what? And also the 170, co- the COVID low was 68 bucks. Was it really? So, it's not like this is totally out of the realm of possibility. Guys, remember, when you get a run uh, yeah. like this, <laughs> this, t- this is just as crazy as this would be, okay? Just because the stock runs up really high doesn't mean it can't fall back down. I think that people get caught up in that saying, oh, this was normal. No, this wasn't normal. This was very abnormal. Yeah. So you can have that to the downside. 68 bucks is the low. Yeah. 
That is incredible, guys. All right, so guys, here's where we stand on these three companies. I ask you to do one thing for me. Subscribe to the channel. We do two or three videos a day during earnings season. We're the fastest to issue uh, earnings videos. You will learn a lot more because the more you learn, the less you fear. Thank you very much. Take care.